Good evening. Welcome to St. John's Baptist Church, St. John, North Dakota, the city at the end of the rainbow. This is our Saturday vigil and it'll be uploaded for tomorrow, the 1030 Mass, for those who watch us live stream. Eternal Father, we offer you the most precious blood of your divine Son, Jesus, in union with all the Masses celebrated throughout the world today. For all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, those in our own homes and within our families, amen. This holy sacrifice of the Mass is being offered to the tensions of the Pro Popolo, that is all our parishioners living and deceased, and in a special way to counter all evils, wickedness, and vices that might be sent and summoned against any one of us of the Church during this unholy feast of Halloween. Let us begin this holy sacrifice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the cornerstone. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the Lord of all. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the radiance of God's glory. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Who take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people saying, Fear the Lord your God and keep throughout the days of your lives all his statutes and commandments which I enjoin on you and thus have long life. Hear then Israel and be careful to observe them that you may grow and prosper the more in keeping with the promise of the Lord, the God of your fathers, to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Therefore you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Take to heart these words which I enjoin on you today. The word of the Lord. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. I love you, Lord, my strength. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praised be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am safe from my enemies. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock. Extolled be God, my Savior. You who gave great victories to your king and showed kindness to your anointed. I love you, Lord, my strength. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, the Levitical priests were many because they were prevented by death from remaining in office. But Jesus, because he remains forever, has a priesthood that does not pass away. Therefore, he is always able to save those who approach God through him, since he lives forever, to make intercession for them. It was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, higher than the heavens. He has no need, as did the high priests, to offer sacrifice day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. He did that once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints men subject to weakness to be high priests, 
but the word of the oath which was taken after the law appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. In my thoughts, my tongue, and forever in my heart. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, The first is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. <clears throat> you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Well said, teacher. You are right in saying, He is one and there is no other than he. And to love him with all your heart and with all your understanding and with all your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God, and no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of the Gospel wash away all of our sins. I think the underlying message is that of true humility. The scribe in today's passage is one of the few religious leaders in the Gospels who chose to approach Jesus with true humility. And usually the Pharisees and the scribes along with the Sadducees, they don't really care about discovering the truth from Jesus. Rather, they have already, they made up their minds about him and they have concluded that he's a, he's a rabble rouser. He's a danger, he's a threat and, and they question and and converse with him in order to try to humiliate him, to discredit him, and to build a case on which eventually to kill him. True humility, on the other hand, is always open to discovery more. True humility is linked with truth, and, and no one in this life can, can ever say that they already possess all truth. This is one reason why pride, which is the cardinal sin of arrogance, is so destructive. It literally, it cuts off from the true connection with other people and from true connection with God. Sinful pride is so, so committed to self-sufficiency that it literally wraps our minds and our hearts in, a, in an impenetrable force field. New insights can't get in and truth can't penetrate and neither can affection or authentic intimacy. How it must have delighted Christ's heart to find this particular gentleman, this scribe, someone who really wanted to know the answer to the very question that he had posed to him. Jesus sums up all our duties, all our responsibilities in two commandments. Loving God with all our heart, our soul, mind, our strength, and loving our neighbor as ourself. And my brothers and sisters, nothing else really matters. Everything else must be taken up in service, in service of fulfilling these two commandments, if we truly want to live our lives to the full. In other words, Christ-like love is Christ's only standard of success. Winning is secondary. Wealth is secondary. Achievements are secondary. Honors and recognition are secondary. Pleasure, power, and popularity, these are all secondary. The only thing that will truly fill our hearts and make our lives take on satisfying flavor of truly durable meaning is this twofold love. My work, your work, our work is a way for us to, to love God by putting God-given talents to productive use and to love our neighbor by providing some kind of useful service for them. Even relaxation is a way to love God by taking good care of one's own health, of, of mind and body, of being a good steward of our life, and by enjoying his good gifts that he allows us to have. It's also a way to love our neighbor by giving them the joy of companionship, 
by entering to God-given gift of a friendship. And the list can literally go on and on. To make every activity of our daily life contribute to, to lasting happiness, all we need do is to literally to plug into these fundamental loves. And the only activities that cannot be harnessed to them are what we call sins. Sin is disobedience, disobedience to God, and sin is always destructive in some way, either for ourselves or for others. Sin is anti-love, but when we sin, it isn't the end of the story, because in Christ we can always make repentance, do penance. That is an act of love for God as well as for neighbor, to restore a broken relationship by being reconciled to God. And then there's also underlining two kinds of self-love. There is healthy self-love and unhealthy self-love. Unhealthy self-love is kind of a, uh, an idolatry. It'd be worship of self. This is self-absorption, self-centeredness, conceit, vanity, arrogance, narrow-mindedness, and the list goes on. This is sinful self-love. It must be resisted and gradually put to death if we are truly going to enter into Christ's kingdom. But there's also what we call healthy self-love. Jesus mentions it in the second great commandment, to love your neighbor as yourself. Healthy self-love involves loving God because it involves seeing ourselves through his eyes. And he has loved us so much that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but have life eternal. Healthy self-love accepts the eternal value of one's own existence, the uniqueness of it, the divine action evident in its very consistency. Healthy self-love rejoices in one's gifts, in opportunities and achievements as much as in others' healthy self-love accepts one's own limitations and is happy to take responsible care of oneself as a way of being a good steward of the gift of existence that we receive from God. Each and every one of us created unique, precious, and unrepeatable is gift from God, and we gift it back to God with what we do with and for each other. And yet in a fallen world, especially in popular culture, that has been so thoroughly secularized that we no longer even recognize the true dignity of the human person or God's plan for us. This healthy self-love is in short supply. It's a big problem. After all, how can we truly love our neighbor as ourselves if we don't know how to love ourselves as God loves us? We are in the midst of spiritual warfare. We are on the brink of half hallows Eve, and we will celebrate All Saints Day and All Souls Day. There are three major holidays in our liturgical calendar that the Church of Satan counters. Halloween, the Incarnation of Christ, Christmas and Easter. And many people get involved in Halloween unknowingly. They have no idea the homage that is given to Satan on that particular night. It's one of the nights that call for an extraordinary number of sacrifices with animals and human beings. All kinds of macabre things will take place. And the sexual abuse that will happen within their black masses is utterly repulsive. Cemeteries will be desecrated. Witches and warlocks will put curses on people, on candy, on costumes. And yet this particular celebration in our country generates more revenue than the Christmas season. The devil laughs and mocks at us. Just take a ride down the road and go through Rolla. First place prize for the hay bale competition was the image of Satan. From the first day I saw it, I prayed St. Michael to destroy it. The second day his cape was shredded. Just the other day, praying against this image of Satan, his right horn was snapped off. And people don't realize this. We cannot give him undue homage. So we have to pray and fast, especially for tomorrow, going into the eve. Take all ill will that might be sent and summoned against us and place it into the wounds of Christ. And we ask the Lord to send it back as a blessing. 
to confuse them, to confound them, and above all, to convert them. Convert them that they may have a healthy self-love and therefore love God rather than having all the Satanists who profess an absolute hatred for him. And we do this with great humility, which is the queen of all the virtues. And there will be great success because God will always bring a greater good from what appears to be such an evil. Amen? Benedict done. Amen. I invite you to stand with me now as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, but consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and Son is adored and glorified and has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With true confidence in our God, we bring our prayers and intercessions. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that he will thrive spiritually and physically. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray also from Mother Church that God will purify and sanctify her for all those who are being persecuted within the Church and those who are being martyred for the faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who labor to gather in the harvest, that they and their important work be appreciated, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For first responders and all who have lives dedicated to public health and safety, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, for those we have promised to pray for, those who have asked for our prayers, those who do pray for us, and for all the special intentions we hold in the deepest recesses of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father God, we beg you to bring an end to the pandemonium of this pandemic, to guard, guide, and protect all peoples, especially caregivers, those who are in the hospitals, and our first responders, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we beseech you to bring an end to the holocaust of abortion, that every country and all peoples will respect life from natural conception through natural death, and that we uphold the dignity and the sanctity of marriage between one man and one woman, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our family, our friends, and parishioners who are suffering physically, emotionally, psychologically, and spiritually, for those who are suffering financially, for all those who are battling addictions, for those who are incarcerated, Father, for those who are recovering from surgeries and those yet to undergo their surgeries, and for all who are living with a terminal illness, we pray you send your healing upon Joe Parisian, Debbie Phelps, Beverly LeBlanc, Marlene Swingham, Landon and Sphia Garrison, Sandra Bercy, Eugene Fleetwood, Ducky LaRock, Shireen and James Hodell, Matt Sampson, Carter Meese, Kirk Heldrick, and Florence Finio. For these we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, for those who have died through the day and those who will die this very night, especially those who will die a sudden, a violent or an unprepared death, we beg you have mercy on their souls. For all our deceased family, friends, and parishioners, that they may truly rest in your peace and for every holy soul in purgatory. We beg you, release these future saints that they may join you, the church triumphant, and thus intercede for us, the church militant, in this ongoing battle for the salvation of souls, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the repose of the souls of Cleveland Woods and Miles Hillary Alex, and they rest in God's peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all our pro popolo, for whom this holy sacrifice is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us also remember all those who are suffering throughout the world due to natural calamities, with tsunamis, earthquakes, and volcanic eruptions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious, loving God and Father, confident that you do hear and answer all our prayers, those spoken and unspoken, 
Once again, we beseech you to infuse in us an abundance of all the gifts, the fruits, and the charisms of the Holy Spirit, so that we may truly reflect and refract your light, your love, and your mercy as we continue plodding through this pilgrimage called life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Regina Gelli, Alleluia. Qui aquem meru isti voltare, Alleluia. Resurrexit sit cotixit, Alleluia. Ora pro nobis Deum, Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Through the mysteries of this water and wine, may become the share of the divinity of Christ to humble himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer, you. fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever, with humble spirit and contrite heart. May we be accepted by you, Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord. Lord, wash away my memory. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation, and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You form man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks broken and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <laughs> 
the mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and John our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Per ipso met cum ipso et in ipso, es tibi Deo Patri Omnipotenti, in unitate Spiritu Sancti, omnis honor et gloria, per omnia saecula saeculorum. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a safe distance sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, I bring you to judgment and condemnation. But through your loving mercy, be for me protection in mind and body, and a healing remedy. At J.I. News Day, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. In the body of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life. You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence, O Lord. For those who are watching virtually our act of spiritual communion, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, 
and I desire to receive you into my soul since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our lips as good or low, may we possess an impurity part that was given to us in time, may be our given in return. Your hand holy, try 
May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Please bow your heads for the blessing. May Almighty God always keep every adversity far from you, and in his kindness pour out upon you the gifts of his blessing. Amen. May God keep your hearts attentive to his words, that they may be filled with everlasting gladness. Amen. And so may you always understand what is good and right, and be found ever hastening along in the path of God's commands, made co heirs with the citizens of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you, and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Please join me in our prayer of consecration to the two hearts. Most sacred heart of Jesus and most immaculate heart of Mary, you're one in purpose as you desire the salvation, holiness, and sanctity of each soul. We, the people of the Turtle Mountain, consecrate ourselves and our families to you, seeking your victory both in our hearts and the world. May the river of the Father's divine love and mercy flow through your hearts into our hearts and through our hearts into the world. We acknowledge the perfection of your mercy, the abundance of your provision, and the supreme sovereignty of the Father's divine will. We desire to be part of your triumphant reign through our yes to holy and divine love. We wish with the help of your grace to live out this consecration now and for eternity. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, simple and sorrowful. A mother of the word incarnate, despise not my petition, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And let us pray. O God, in your ineffable providence, you were pleased to choose blessed Joseph to be the spouse of your most holy mother. Grant, we beg you, that we may be worthy to heaven for our intercessor in heaven, whom on earth we venerate as our protector, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Remember to pray hard, pray well, pray often. Save souls, don't lose yours in the process, and tell the devil to go to hell. Amen. Mani togi go migwich. Thank you for joining us. Being that this is a very um, unholy celebration that we're coming into, I'm going to pray the formal prayer against Satan and the rebellious angels that were given to us by Pope Leo XIII. So anytime I raise my hand and make the sign of the cross, you bless yourselves. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Most glorious Prince of the Heavenly Army, Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in our battle against principalities and powers, against the rulers of this world of darkness, against the spirit of wickedness in the high places. Come to the assistance of men whom God has created to his likeness, and whom he has redeemed at a great price from the tyranny of the devil. Holy Church venerates thee as her guardian and protector. To thee the Lord has entrusted the souls of the redeemed to be led into heaven. Pray therefore the God of peace to crush Satan beneath our feet, that he may no longer retain men captive and do injury to the Church. Offer our prayers to the Most High, that without delay they may draw his mercy down upon us. Take hold of the dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil and the Satan. Bind him and cast him into the bottomless pit, so that he should no more seduce the nations. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, our God and Lord, strengthened by the intercession of the Immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, a blessed Michael the Archangel of the blessed Apostles, Peter and Paul and all the saints, and powerful in the holy authority of my priestly ministry, we confidently undertake to repulse the attacks and deceits of the devil. God arises, his enemies are scattered, and those who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so they are driven. As wax melts before the fire, so the wicked perish at the presence of God. Behold the cross of the Lord, flee bands of enemies. He has conquered the lion of the tribe of Judah, the offspring of David. May thy mercy, Lord, descend upon us as great as our hope in thee. We drive you from us, whoever you may be. Unclean spirits, all satanic powers, all infernal invaders, all wicked legions, assemblies, and sects, in the name and by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, do may you be snatched away and driven from the church of God and from the souls made to the image and likeness of God and redeemed by the precious blood of the divine Lamb. Most cunning serpent, you shall no more dare to deceive the human race, persecute the church, torment God's elect, and sift them as wheat. The Most High God commands you. He with whom in your great instance you still claim to be equal, he who wants all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. God the Father commands you. God the Son commands you. God the Holy Ghost commands you. Christ, God's word made flesh, commands you. He who to save our race outdone through your envy, humble himself becoming obedient even unto death. He who built his church on the firm rock and declared that the gates of hell shall not prevail against her, because he will dwell with her all days, even to the end of the world. The sacred sign of the cross commands you, as does also the power of the mysteries of the Christian faith. The glorious Mother of God, the Virgin Mary, commands you. She who, by her humility and from the first moment of her immaculate conception, crushed your proud head. The faith of the holy apostles Peter and Paul and the other apostles commands you. The blood of the martyrs and the pious intercession of all the saints command you. Thus cursed dragon and you diabolical legions, we adjure you by the living God, by the true God, by the holy God, by the God who so loved the world that he gave up his only begotten Son, that every soul believing in him might not perish but have life everlasting. Stop deceiving human creatures and pouring out to them the poison of eternal damnation. Stop harming the church and hindering her liberty. Be gone, Satan, inventor and master of all deceit, enemy of man's salvation. Give place to Christ in whom you have found none of your works. Give place to the one holy Catholic and apostolic church acquired by Christ at the price of his blood. Stoop beneath the all-powerful hand of God. Tremble and flee when we invoke the holy and terrible name of Jesus, this name which causes hell to tremble, this name to which the virtues, powers, and dominations of heaven are humbly submissive, this name which the cherubim and seraphim praise unceasingly repeating, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord, the God of armies. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come unto thee. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of heaven, God of earth, God of angels, God of archangels, God of patriarchs, God of prophets, God of apostles, God of martyrs, God of confessors, God of virgins, God who has power to give life after death and rest after work, because there is no other God than thee and there can be no other. For thou art the creator of all things visible and invisible, of whose reign there shall be no end. We humbly prostrate ourselves before thy glorious majesty and we beseech thee to deliver us by the power from all the tyranny of the infernal spirits, from their snares, their lies, and their furious wickedness. Deign, O Lord, to grant us thy powerful protection, and to keep us safe and sound, we beseech thee through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. From the snares of the devil, deliver us, O Lord, that thy church may serve thee in peace and liberty, we beseech thee to hear us, that thou may crush down all enemies of thy church, we beseech thee to hear us. Lord Jesus, we ask that you seal each and every one of us here, present, those who are watching. Seal us and our loved ones in your precious blood against any and all incursions of the evil one. All clinging, familial, familial, retaliating spirits, 
CLS, our loved ones, and everything essential to our safety, peace, health, and well-being in your precious blood against any and all curses and retaliating curses intended to break these curses. Seal each and every one of us, our families, and everything essential to our safety, peace, health, and well-being against all hexes, vexes, spells, triggers, trances, covens, machinations, renewable mechanisms, every and all cursing and mocking spirits sent and summoned against us. Bind them separately and individually. Render them deaf, dumb, blind, mute, impotent in taking effect against any one of us. Sending them immediately to the foot of the cross for you to dispose of. Father God, you tell us of what we ask of you in and through the most holy name of Jesus will be done. Today, with total trust, with utter surrender, but above all with expectant faith. We knock, we ask, and we seek all graces, blessings, healing of mind, body, and soul, and protection in and through the most holy name of Jesus the Christ, priest, prophet, and king. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen, amen, amen. Bless your homes. Holy water, salt, no reason to be afraid. Pray a rosary for the conversion of all those who will be practicing all kinds of heinous and macabre sacrifices tomorrow. Send all your will back through the precious blood of Jesus to bring about a conversion, to confuse them, to confound them, and above all, to convert them that they repent from hating God and be brought back in for the salvation of their souls. Amen? Amen. All you all have a God glorious weekend. Pray hard, pray well, and pray often. Amen? Amen.